Okay, I got a quiz for you here today. It involves this first clip, Jesse, go ahead and show them. Okay, I want you to compare this exercise and what you're seeing done here. We know it's a lat pull down, but what specifically is being done here? Okay, if you've watched any kind of YouTube fitness, likely it's jumping out to you. You know exactly what I'm talking about, but if not, watch the exercise and evaluate. Now, if that wasn't helpful enough, I will give you a hint. Go ahead and show this one now. Okay, do you recognize what's happening now when he's doing it? Okay, again, it's not necessarily the lat pull down, but it's actually maybe how it's being performed. Okay, great. Now, the next part of this test is I want you to compare that and the muscle building benefits specifically of what you just saw to this next exercise. Jesse, go ahead and cue that up. You got it. Now, watch this exercise. And again, compare it, muscle building benefits to what you just saw. Now, if you don't recognize what this is, then it means that you're not only not watching enough YouTube fitness, but you're certainly not watching enough Athlean X. And it kind of breaks my heart, oh, actually. It's gonna be okay, Jeff. Don't I, worry I'm just about saying it. It, it does. So this is a face pull. I'll give that part away. And it's not just my favorite exercise. It's not gonna win just because I like it. Again, we're gonna pair these things objectively head to head. Actually, you can see Jesse's used the exercise too to build up quite a nice upper back. Which one do you think builds more muscle? All right, now, the reason for this question and why we're pitting them head to head, it's actually something I never thought I'd have to do, except we get comments and questions and we got one from who? Joshua the Great 61291. Okay, what did he say? He said, Jeff, I've been seeing so many videos about long length partials and how much more effective they are even when compared to full range of motion reps. Which brings me to your beloved face pulls. I know they are safe and everything, but they don't meet the criteria for an effective long length partial exercise. Therefore, should I find a new exercise that I can apply long length partials to? Okay, so there's a lot to uh, go through here. Okay, first mm -hmm. of all, long length partials was the answer to the first thing that you saw there. A long length partial being the partial repetition, not full range of motion, that's being done with usually heavy weights, good load, at that top extended portion of the range of motion, or the most stretched portion of the muscle during that exercise. Mm -hmm. But I'll answer the question there. Does the face pull first and foremost meet the criteria for a good long length partial exercise? It doesn't really. So he's not incorrect in that. When you have the beginning portion of a face pull, some might say, well, you can be in a long length in that, can't you? Mm -hmm. Not really because it requires heavy loads. You need high tension with stretch to make the long length partial effective. Because I could do, let's say, a stretch exercise like a seated dumbbell curl with a pair of three pound pink dumbbells in my hands all day long and I'm not gonna get the same effect. You need the weight plus the stretch to create the tension that makes those productive. Now, what does that sound like to you? Uh, Anything? Something not new, eccentric training? Oh, yes. Right, in, other, in order to build muscle, we know that eccentric overload is one of the three main drivers of hypertrophy. So the first thing that grabs my attention is everyone wants to talk about long length partials right now, but we've been talking about them forever really, and that is they're a subset of eccentric training, a known stimulus for growth. So when research studies come out, again, that claim, or even let's say prove in the study, long length partials create more muscle gains than full range of motion. Long length partials, can produce more muscle gains than the contracted portion of an exercise. Okay. Long leg partials can increase muscle mass when compared to not using them, five to 10%. Hmm. All right, and some even create protocols and recommend protocols that involve only the use of long leg partials and they throw out the rest of the repetition. And so no full range of motion reps? None, because they don't see the benefit there. So if I looked at that lat pull down again, a full range of motion repetition would bring that bar all the way down to my chest and all the way back up. Now the eccentric portion of that repetition is the entire raising of the bar back to the top. When I have heavy loads there, under tension in an elongating muscle, most up here when it's fully stretched, but in an elongating muscle, I have that increased eccentric load. The partial is gonna hang out at the top portion where you're most elongated and most stretched, which will drive the most tension theoretically to the muscle. So it should come as no surprise that these are effective and that they actually work for building muscle. I'm not arguing that. I use them in my own training, mm -hmm. okay? But I think that we have to stop falling in love with research when it comes out and considering it to be the end all be all because there's more to let's say a face pull that we're comparing it to that does not do a good job of having tension in that position. By the way, the load to use in a face pull is always gonna be very low. Mm -hmm. 
30 pounds, 60 pounds, whatever it is on your stack there. And when you have your arms out in front of you here, the tension through the muscles that you're ultimately gonna work is at its lowest. It peaks when the arms are perpendicular to that cable, it's gonna be lowest when they're parallel. So it does not meet the criteria for being a great long length partial exercise, but should we do it? That's the question. Well, I think the bigger question we have to ask right away though is, is there something else that's happening here? Maybe it's less magical than you think. Because a lot of the use of long length partials, especially in the case of Sam Sulik, is that they're occurring at the end of sets after the person has already reached concentric muscle failure. And failure is a big concept here. Right. In other words, are you training with a higher intensity because you're now employing long length partials? So you go through all of your full range of motion repetitions and you're only using partials, not because you decided I'm gonna use partials from the beginning of my set, but you're doing them out of necessity because you cannot move the weight any further because of the fatigue through any additional range of motion. There's a big difference there. And that requires that you've already failed concentrically and you're forced to have to use these partials in the extended range. When we talk about the gains of five to 10%, I think we need to make sure that we're also looking at that with the right frame of mind. Is five to 10% gains in muscle size or really in any lab setting, is it a significant amount of increase? Yes, it is. Again, in a laboratory setting, that is. But when we look at the application of that in the real world, you may not be as excited about it as it might seem. Let's say we're gonna measure strength, okay? A 10% increase in strength over the course of a study. Take a 250 pound bench press that goes up to 275 by the time you're done. 10% increase. Yeah, that's big. It's pretty big, right? Especially if that was your max. That's pretty big. But now when we measure muscle size or hypertrophy, we've got a couple ways we can do that, but let's do it by the circumference of the muscle you train. You're training your biceps in the study. You're gaining what? How much in 12 weeks? Let's say it's two inches. Mm -hmm. Two inches on your arms from 15 inches to 17 inches or from 15 inches with an additional 10% to 17.2 inches. Hmm. That's it, 2.2 versus two. And if you gained an inch on your arms, it's one inch versus 1.1 inch. And if you're, if you're giving up the alternative options and you're seeking out, like our questioner is, only exercises that can allow you to perform long length partials, are you missing a much bigger picture here? And that's where I wanna go back to the face pull. Because this face pull, it's traditionally a corrective exercise, but I don't want you to look at it as just a corrective exercise. In other words, diminish its value versus a sexier heavy lat pull down. It can't possibly be a muscle builder. Yes, it can. Because this face pull, while a damn good muscle builder in its own right, believe it or not, yeah. again, you go back and look at some of your, your growth and development there, yeah. right? It has this other effect too. It amplifies your performance on the big lifts by filling in those weak links in the kinetic chain on the bigger compound exercises, you wind up getting a higher sum total output on the big compound exercise because you've addressed the weak link. So these are not just corrective exercises, they're stage setters for much bigger performances on your big lifts. Yeah. And again, all you gotta do is look at Jesse here. How much did you weigh when you did your 560 pound deadlift? Uh, 163 at best. I mean, that's a massive deadlift for someone at his size. How does he do it? Is it something magical? No, he is a disciple here of Athlean X and he's been doing face pulls for a hell of a long time. It's true. And he's got definitely very well developed upper back muscles. Mm -hmm. And he's got that from doing his face pulls, but I think beyond that, it led to a much bigger deadlift which led to more muscle size. So ask yourself this question. When you look at those studies that compare, let's say even the same person doing a leg extension, one leg with partials and the other leg without, yes, you're comparing the partials versus someone who's not using partials, but are you comparing the partials to someone who maybe just focused on progressive overload and heavy squatting? Because the strength focus could have produced greater than five to 10% gains in muscle size. It's true. Right? There's more than one way to skin a cat. And I think when we start to fall in love with the research and we get excited about it, which we should, but we start to say, hey, everything else goes out the window, including your face pulls, Jeff, because I need something that does long length partials, you're diminishing the other benefits that you get. This face pull allows you to do much more than that. There's some downstream benefits that come from this that in the end of the day, maybe at the end of a year, you're far surpassing whatever five to 10% increase you were getting from long length partials. Again, I'm not saying long length partials don't work. 
I'm not saying that. I'm saying you have to make sure you compare it and broaden up your, your picture here. The other thing I would say is, are there other benefits to using full range of motion? And it's very clear there are. I actually made a whole video where some have shown they have the same increased flexibility levels by just performing all of their weight exercises in the gym through a full range of motion. In other words, negating the need to stretch. Now, I don't fully advocate that because I think some people develop tightnesses that need specific stretching, but just as an overall concept, there have been studies that show that. So you can't just say, hey, long leg partials and focus so far in on just hypertrophy when the bigger picture, meaning your overall athleticism. I mean, for me, it's impossible to really separate all these things, but your overall athleticism, your strength. And maybe you aren't really so focused on your strength, but I can tell you right now, you better damn well should be because as you get older, it's one of the biggest predictors of your function throughout the rest of your life mm -hmm. and your mortality risk. The stronger you are, the better you're gonna be, the healthier you're gonna maintain. Your, your health throughout life, so your longevity improves. How about explosiveness? Is that of, that of any value to you? So why are we only looking at one element? Why is it always about just hypertrophy? I mean, I love a good pump, I love a good muscle gain, but it's really about more than that. And trying to evaluate exercises solely based on this one aspect is gonna definitely leave major holes in your training and something you're likely not going to be happy with. And when you realize that in the case of your five to 10% increase, your two inch increase in the size of your arms versus the potential 2.2 inch increase in the size of your arms, it's just a wake up call to how myopic it might be to be looking at your training through that one single lens. So to answer our friend's question here, what exercise should you do instead? You shouldn't. You should still do the face pull. You should still do partial repetitions, you should still do eccentric overload, you should still focus on strength, you should still maximize your flexibility. You need to do it all. And I'm sorry if you're looking for a shortcut around that answer, but all of these things are important and all play a major part. In terms of the studies, guys, it's the responsibility of those that share the information with you, not just to have it go in one side of the brain and out the other and just regurgitate, but to actually apply some science to it. And that is something I think is sorely lacking, let's just say, in YouTube fitness as a whole. Make sure that you understand what you can do with this information so you can make it better and take it a step further. If you're looking to take your programming and your training a step further, then guys, head over to athletex.com. We have full programs and supplements available to you. If you found this video helpful, make sure you share it with someone else you think might too. Also, click subscribe, turn on for notifications so you never miss a video when we put one out. All right, guys, see you soon.